What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another architectural modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about how we can download some windows and bring them into our Blender models without having to manually model everything out. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the thing about windows is a lot of manufacturers make 3D models of their windows available for download so that designers can actually use them in their models. And so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the format that those are usually in. So so I'm starting off with Pella Window and Doors website just because Pella has 3D models of their windows available. A lot of the time if you just go to a manufacturer's website and you look around, they have those models sitting around somewhere. So in this case, for example, let's go ahead and jump into their windows and maybe do like the double hung for right now. So if you pick a double hung product, so in this case, I'm gonna pick the Pella Architect series, and then you scroll down, there's usually some kind of resources on the manufacturer's page for designers. So sometimes that's gonna be things like 2D elevations and cross sections that you can download as either like a D DWF or DXF or DWG file. But a lot of the time you can find these 3D and BIM models. And a lot of the time designers make their models available in either a Revit format or a SketchUp format. So sometimes they're in as like DWG. Occasionally you'll see them as something like a Collada file or something like that. But most of the time you're gonna see something kind of like this. So let's say for example, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus mostly on the SketchUp files because there's actually a way that these um, two programs kind of talk to each other where with Revit, it gets a little bit trickier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just downloading a SketchUp file of a window. So in this case, for example, you can just click on the button for SketchUp and what that's gonna do is that's gonna download a zip file, which we can look at. And so what we wanna do in this situation is we wanna extract that, right? So I'm just gonna right click on it extract it so that it's not in a zip file anymore. And you can see how there's a number of different SketchUp models that are in here. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna import this in to Blender. Well, there's an importer that's available that allows you to import SketchUp files into Blender. And so there's an importer for SketchUp um, that you can download and use um, in order to bring those um, SketchUp files in. So I will link to both the Blender artist posts as well as the link to that importer. It did just get updated for Blender Blender 2.93. So basically what you do is you just download this. It's just an add-on. So it comes down as a zip file and then you jump into Blender. So in Blender, what you do is you do an edit preferences and you just install that zip file um, from the link that I'll have in the notes down below. And you wanna make sure that you've enabled the import export SketchUp importer. So what that does is that allows you to import those SketchUp models. So in this case, what we wanna do now that we have that um, enabled, so we just wanna to go to File, Import, and it's gonna add the option for Import SketchUp Scene. Well then, you can go find the SketchUp file that you wanna bring in, and you can double click in order to bring it in. So let's, for example, bring in the, let's go with the double hung equal sash. So I'm just gonna click the button for Import SketchUp File. Well notice what that did is that brought in this detailed model of this window into Blender. And so, because we have this detailed model that's in, in Blender, we don't have to model this out ourselves. So a couple quick things about this. So first off, what you can do when you bring all these in, because notice how they get brought in as separate parts and pieces, right? And so it's really hard to select um, because you might drag a box across this and pick up all the stuff in the background. And so what I wanna do is I wanna pick up all these parts and pieces. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna tap the H key to hide, to hide my background model. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna select this window and do a control J. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to join all of these into a single object. So now I can move that around just like this. Notice how now all those little parts and pieces have been put together into a single object and you can just move it around really easily. So then I'm gonna turn my walls back on and then the only thing we have to do is we have to make this so that it cuts an opening in our exterior walls, right? So if we place this right now and I'm just gonna do a shift tab and I'm gonna turn on vertex snapping so that I can kind of align this with an object. But notice how right now, there's no opening in my wall where my window is, right? Well, what we wanna do is we just want to import or we wanna create a Boolean that aligns with this window. So all we have to do to do that is I'm gonna do a shift right click 
in order to put my 3D cursor right here. And I'm just gonna do a Shift A and I'm just gonna add a cube. And so I'm just gonna scale this cube down. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna align the parts and pieces of this cube with my window. So I'm just gonna tab in edit mode and I'm just going to tap the G key and move this around. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the snapping along with inference locking to the different axes in order to set my box size up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap G then X and notice how this is gonna let me snap to these ends. Then I'll do a G, Z. I'm just gonna snap this to the top right here. And all I'm doing is I'm making this box the size of my window. So that's all you really need to do. Because then we're gonna turn that box into a Boolean. that's gonna cut an opening. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna use that box that I created in order to cut a hole in the wall. So first off, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Somehow my wall geometry got dragged into my SketchUp Mesh Objects folder. So I'm just gonna drag this into my original collection right here. But then when I move this around, what I wanna do is I want to right click and I wanna select all the objects in the collection. So we're gonna move this over so that it aligns with the wall. All right, so we do have a problem with this. Notice I moved my window over aligned with the wall right here. The problem we have is we don't currently have an opening because we haven't set up our cube to actually cut a hole in the wall. So in order to do that, what we wanna do is we want to click on our wall. We wanna add a Boolean modifier. So when we add a Boolean modifier, what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to intersect our wall with this cube that we created. So we're basically using the cube as a hole cutter. And so what we want to do is we want to click on the little eyedropper right here. And then we want to click on the cube. And so notice how it didn't really do anything. And so the reason for that is not because the Boolean modifier isn't working. It's because our cube is still being displayed in here as an actual geometry. So what it's doing is it's blocking the hole that's being cut by showing up in our scene. So what we want to do there is we just want to select our cube object, jump over into our object properties, and we want to set our viewport display for this cube to be wire. So when we set this to be wire, what that means is that means that we're going to see just the bounding of the uh, of the object, but we're not going to see all the faces, so it's not going to block this hole. The other thing we need to do is we need to scale this along the x-axis just a little bit more so we can be sure it's cutting through our wall. So the nice thing about the cutter here is we do want to make sure that it's aligned with our window, but it doesn't really matter if it overlaps our wall a little bit because literally it's just there to cut a hole. And so what that's done is that's allowed us to bring this window in here. Well, let's say we wanted to duplicate this. So we had multiple different copies of this window. So all you would do is you would just go up to this object. I'm going to go ahead and call this something else. I'm going to call it window one. But if you wanted another window, you could just right click in here and do a duplicate collection. Notice how that gives you a second copy of this window. Well, then you can come right click on this and you can select all the objects and you can move them along your wall. Now notice how right now though, the only thing you're gonna have to do is you are gonna have to add an additional Boolean modifier um, in order to do this. Or the other thing you could do theoretically is you could put all of your cut geometry into a single collection and um, set this to be a collection Boolean, but I don't think we really wanna do that. What we wanna do is we just wanna add a second Boolean modifier and we just wanna link it to our second cube. So now you can add as many copies of this window as you want in order to do this. Now, one thing to note is some manufacturers, so Milgard's a good example. If you come in here and you want to download a copy of a model, so for example, like their aluminum double casement, notice how there's options in here to open with Revit or to open with SketchUp. And so again, the easiest way to do this is going to be to um, download this with SketchUp. But notice how in this case, they're actually hosting all of their stuff in the SketchUp 3D warehouse. So if I click on this, what this does is this, this brings me a link to the SketchUp 3D warehouse. Now you can log into the SketchUp 3D warehouse by creating a free um, profile and you can download these windows just from this page. So for example, I could click download and we'll talk about the version that we want in a minute. You actually don't want the 2021 version. 
And then you can import that the same way inside of Blender. I'm, I'm not a giant fan of doing it that way, but that's where they're hosting all of their windows. So that's where you have to go to get these model files. And so one thing I do want to note is when you bring this in, I recommend downloading it as a SketchUp 2017 model. So for whatever reason, the 2021 models don't always play very good with the importer. Um, the 2017 is kind of a fixed format that uh, has been around for a long time. So you generally know that's going to work. So I would download that, that as a 2017 model. You just do the same thing, right? File, import, SketchUp scene. You would just go find that model and bring it in. So I'm just gonna click on import SKP. And then same thing happened. This got brought in as a window with these individual pieces. Well, then you could just right click and do a select objects and you could do a control J in order to join them. So same kind of thing, but this gives you access to a very large library of uh, manufacturer window files. One thing I like about the manufacturer window files is they're actually modeled to scale. So these are gonna be to a real world size. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if this was helpful, if you bring in windows like this, or if you have another source for windows. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some other architectural modeling tutorials on this page as well. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.